Hey everyone, and welcome back to Gannett Reviews, where today we are on board a 1971 Huckins Offshore 58. This yacht is 50 years old, but as you can see from the video, she has been extremely well maintained by our current owners, who have spent a small fortune on her, looking after not only all the woodwork, but she has also been re-engined, and she is turnkey ready to go condition. First impressions when you step up to this yacht is definitely the woodwork finish that's on here. Whether it's the varnished handrails that you see throughout the yacht or how bright the white finish is on the superstructure as well. As we walk around this yacht, I like the fact that you've got the guardrails on one side and you've got handrails on the other. So you always feel safe and secure regardless of where you are on the deck. If you notice the cleats and the fuel fillers and things like that, they're all off to the side. So as you walk around here, there's very little for you to trip up on. In front of the deck house, we've got seat lockers. That's pretty much the entire width of the boat. These are perfect for storing um, ropes and fenders, or perhaps you want to store some cushions and seat covers and things like that. As you make your way up to the foredeck, there's a varnished teak anchor pulpit. This has got a Maxwell two-way power windlass. There's a stainless steel 45 pound anchor and a stainless steel chain is stored in the pulpit. There's also a stainless steel bow rail which connects to the varnished mahogany cap rails all along the side deck. And again as we move our way towards the stern of the boat, you can just see how much space we have here and it makes it easy to walk from bow to stern. And also the high guard rails that you see throughout the side it makes it very safe if you've got family on board. And on a yacht like this, the aft cockpit is probably one of the main features of the boat. This is a very spacious cockpit that's got an oiled teak planking and throughout the deck. It's actually got access into the aft cabin, which we'll explore in a few moments from the inside. And she's got two mounted pedestal chairs for big game offshore fishing. On either side of the aft deck, you also have rod holders in place. And this yacht does have a bathing platform with board and ladders as well as a transom gate which is giving you great access for the water and depending on what you catch is also a great way for bringing the fish on board. I like the fact that on the aft cockpit um, we've got storage lockers here and this can be used for ropes and fenders but it could also be used for fishing and diving equipment as well. The port side locker actually has a Glen Dining cable master system for retrieving and storing the 50 amp dock power cable as well. Underneath the aft deck is where you'll find the engines. Um, it's a traditional Huckins setup. This has got V drives, and this boat has actually been re engined in 2010. And they're powered by twin Cummins, it's QSM 11 diesel engines. And these are approximately 670 horsepower each. And at the time of recording this video, they had less than 700 engine hours on the clock. I like the fact that there is easy access to do your day-to-day -day maintenance from the hatch in the aft, aft cockpit. But if you wanted to do a larger maintenance, or if you ever needed to do engine rebuilds, or if you ever needed to replace the engines, these decks actually lift up and you've got the complete access. As you can see in the engine room, we have got a 21 kilowatt generator. And this has got less than 2000 hours on the clock. You've got rack or fuel filters. And you can see that everything's clearly labelled and identified, so it makes maintenance on this engine very, very easy to do. This boat measures in at 61 foot in length. She's going to be my 15 foot 4. She's got a displacement of 66,000 pounds. But she still has a cruising speed of 20 knots and a maximum speed in the mid 20s. As you move inside the bridge deck, one of my first impressions was I liked the fact they had the roll up eyes and glass curtains on the aft half of the bridge deck. If you wanted to, you can keep these down and make it fully enclosed. But you can either roll these up or you can even remove them if you wanted extra air and ventilation. There's a large L shaped settee area, and this has got not only speakers mounted underneath, but it's also got storage underneath. And I like that it kept it, your family and friends close to you when you're at the helm. There's also a large Sony TV here, and again that just adds to the entertainment that's available to you. On the port side, 
I have got a weight bar area. I need to set up refreshment. There's a fridge here, and there is also a U line ice maker. You've got the sink, you got plenty of worktop space for preparing snacks, and you've actually got two pull out refrigerator drawers as well. I like the fact that these drawers and the fridge they all lock into place if needed. So it means that if you're taking the boat offshore, you don't have to worry about doors or drawers sliding out and things like that. The bridge deck is air conditioned. And throughout the entire yacht, you'll see that the sole is varnished teak and holly, and it's got a really nice finish to it, and it just helps bring that touch of elegance to the yacht throughout. Now on the port side, we do have a companion seat here. There's also plenty of space if you wanted to use it for navigating charts. And then as you can see as we move around here, you've got the helm centrally located, and the navigation equipment overhead. In terms of navigation equipment, You've got two Raymarine radar chart plotters, you've got a Simrad autopilot, you've got a VHF radio. And although there is a flybridge, I really like the fact that from the helm, you've got pretty much 360 degree visibility, as you can see here. That's just a few short steps down on the starboard side, and this leads you into the main saloon. And as you walked into the saloon, I was really impressed with how bright this is. There is ample storage space on cabinets. You've got a large city seating area. You have got a TV and entertainment system. As you can work your way around, I really like the large windows that you have, and these are almost deck level, which is pretty unusual, for, especially on a boat of this size. And you can see you've got drink storage underneath. And there's cabinet space as well here. If you look down a few steps, the galley is open to the deck house. And you'll find that forward and the lower level to port. And there's a dinette area to the starboard side, which would accommodate probably about four adults. And you can see here it's got a microwave oven. And if we go back around to the main galley, You'll see that there's plenty of storage and drawers and lockers, as well as a large GE refrigerator freezer. And this just makes extended cruising that much more comfortable to be on board. And if you notice, all these cabinets they all have the ability to lock in place. So again, if you're taking this offshore, you don't have to worry about everything falling onto the decks and floors and things like that. I've got a four burner stove with an oven. You've got additional storage underneath. And as we lead forward, um, you'll see there's a stateroom on the bow. And this has got upper and lower berths to port. And I like the fact that it's got the porthole hatches, both for light and for ventilation. These are good sized berths that adults could use as well as young family. On the starboard side we've got large locker space which is currently being used for life jackets. And then you can see we've also got bow access to check out the anchor chain and things like that. This area also has a hitch compartment and this includes a shower. That's obviously got a toilet as well. And I like the fact that there was plenty of headroom throughout this area. And as we head aft towards the main saloon, again you can see the bright varnish work throughout this yacht. And the main saloon itself is actually carpeted. And then as we head further aft, you get down a few steps. The first room you're going to come to as you head aft is where all the switch control panels are. And I was really impressed with how detailed and labelled everything was. And the owner has actually changed the boat's wiring over to 24 volt and upgraded all the electrical panels. And then as we make our way aft, you'll find that there's a guest stateroom and this is located on the lower level to port. Unless it's forward of the master stateroom. 
there are two single berths separated by a chest of drawers in here. And you can see the sole is carpeted and there is a hanging locker. And again, there's plenty of headroom in here. There's plenty of storage space underneath the bunks. And there's drawers under the one on this side. And I just love the detailed varnish throughout. Then opposite this cabin is another heads compartment. This has got personalised towels for the boat's initials and boat's name. The boat's name is actually Kimo Sabi. And there's a shower in here as well. And there's a head discharging system that leads to the holding tank. And then we make our way to the master stateroom, which is located aft on the lower level. And this has got a lot of the mahogany hand rub varnish finish to it. To port and starboard, you'll see extra wide berths. And there's six drawers under each. And you'll also find that we've got a large two door hanging locker, giving you plenty of storage space throughout. And this does have access to its own ensuite head compartment. And again, this has got the toilet, the shower. It's got a head discharge into a holding tank for here as well. So no problem with headroom in this area. And the entire stateroom, as you'd imagine, is fully air conditioned. I was impressed with the amount of locker space that there was. And again, this just helps make this suitable for extended cruising. The boat's currently in Jacksonville, Florida, but the owners are about to take it north up to Rhode Island. And I don't see this boat having any issues getting there. I expect everybody to be comfortable on the journey. I would like to point out there is a flybridge on this yacht. But because the yacht is in undercover storage just now, I wasn't able to access the flybridges easily. Um, but this does have uh, electronics up here, including two Raymarine radars, a Danforth Constellation Compass, you've got the Smart Craft gauges, it's got the ZF electronic gear and throttle controls, and you've got the ICOM VHF radio, or the Simrad Autopilot, and you've got remotes controlled to the searchlight up here as well. I'd like to thank everybody for their time and watching this video. I'd like to thank Huckins Yachts for allowing us on board to take a look and I'm going to include the details to the listing and the description of the video and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.